be focused on helping people transition to climate uh, or careers in climate. Um, and if you're not already in the community, we'll be sending some information at the end and in a follow-up email to share how you can join and be involved. Um, so I guess now back to Alexis to introduce our speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, great. Thank you, Thomas. Um, super excited to have Nitin here with us today. He is a yogi, life coach, and the global customer sustainability leader at Intuit. Um, using the power of meditation, visualization, and focused action, he transformed his role at Intuit as a product manager to focus on fighting the climate crisis. And when he's not leading on climate, he loves to lead transformational conversations that help people discover, design, and live their dream life. I've had some really amazing conversations with Nitin, and he's been a wonderful friend to the entire work on climate product managers team. So I'm very excited to share the wealth of knowledge that he has with everyone here today. Um, Thank you guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So while we get started, if everyone wants to drop their location in the chat, please feel free. We'd love to know a little bit more about each of you. And we'll jump right into questions. Does that sound good, Nutin? Sounds perfect, yeah. Awesome. Okay. And just just for everyone's reference, so uh, just my name is pronounced Nitin. Uh, you know, it's kind of like saying Nathan, but with eyes, so you'll get it. But thank you. Yes. Um. So I would love it if you could start by telling us at what point in your product career you began to have this interest in climate, and maybe talk about how much time it took between when you were interested in climate and when you actually started working on climate in your everyday life? Yeah, it definitely, you know, was a journey. Yeah. You know, by no means was it, you know, sort of overnight or, you know, from the very beginning, you know, if we just back up a little bit, I think my interest in climate, it was kind of, it wasn't even necessarily something I ever thought I would have be doing. Uh, I really, you know, was just a just a kid that loved going to national parks with my family. Like really, I think that's where my love for nature, climate, you know, just outdoor beauty and uh, recreation started. And then I think as I became more aware about climate change over time, I remember seeing, you know, the inconvenient truth uh, when it first came out in the early 2000s. I was like, oh, had no idea that there was such a thing like this going on. Uh, so that, it, that started to be in the back of the mind. And then over the years, as uh, just started seeing more and more, you know, crazy weather events that like all of us have seen, and especially at such a high frequency in the last couple of years than we've ever seen before. Uh, you know, and all of these sort of themes kind of ran in parallel as my, as my path on yoga and being a yogi and really connecting with your inner self also became deeper. You know, part of the realization actually came as I was literally meditating and I felt like, you know, the earth, you know, mother earth or whatever you want to call it was, was almost calling out to us. I kind of had this like, uh, you know, a moment where it was like, hey, there's droughts on one end and then there's relentless downpours and floods somewhere else there's fires happening at much greater and greater frequency there was all these signs that just became clear for me that like wow it's almost like the earth is calling out for help uh and then you know that of course backed by science and just everything that you know the scientific community is is putting out and especially depending on how closely you study uh, you can see you know backed by data that all the frequencies of catastrophic events just going up year over year uh, and beyond that. And then I remember actually, I think it was around 2019, 2020, there was an IPCC report that came out and said, hey, if, we, if we're going to turn the ship around and you know, if we're going to make a difference, this coming decade is the decade of action. We, we have to have meaningful impact impact in this very decade, not some time in the future from now, in order to actually steer the ship in the right direction. And I would say at least for five years prior to that, 
I had been thinking about getting involved in some way, shape, or form on the climate path. You know, whether it was like joining the Sierra Club or talking to my local T50.org chapter and wondering how I can get involved. But it was around that 2020 time period where I was like, okay, snap, I better get off my butt. Like if I'm serious, if I love nature and I care about this and this means so much to me, then I need to go from talking about it in my head to like taking some meaningful action and not just be signing petitions online. That's not enough anymore. Uh, and, you know, so after I had kind of had that moment and that it really sank in and I was just working as a product manager at the time on on our quick one of our QuickBooks products. I remember going to my manager at that time and just having a conversation and saying, hey, look, it's really clear for me. I think in six months, um, I'm going to go in this direction. I'm going to go do something meaningful on the journey to actually contributing towards fighting climate change or addressing our climate footprint. And I'm going to make that shift. I'm going to figure out what that means, but I'm giving you a heads up that that's where I'm going next. So if you, in case you're wondering if I'm going to take that next project or next role, like count me out, I'm going in this other direction. Um, but it was a journey. Yeah. I love that you had that conversation with your manager and were really clear about what you wanted and what you were trying to do as your next step. And one thing I think is really interesting about your path to working on climate is that you made this switch while you were at Intuit. Because oftentimes it's very common for us to hear from folks who are like, I have to switch to a new company where maybe a climate focus is at the, was at the core of that company's work when they were founded. Mm -hmm. And that's a very common, I would say misconception that that's the only way to work on climate. So I would love to hear a little bit more about how having some tenure and established relationships at Intuit really made it possible for you to make that pivot. And if you have any advice for more senior folks or folks who have been in a company for a few years and are trying to do the same thing. Yeah, uh, you know, Jamie Alexander from Project Drawdown uh, put out this article and, and if uh, folks haven't read it, I would encourage you to check it out where she coined the term that every job is a climate job. Uh, and especially in this decade, you know, as you see more and more companies waking up to the reality and jumping on the bandwagon of like, okay, we're going to do something on climate and we're going to figure it out. It's becoming really clear that uh, literally every job, if you choose to be, you can actually find a path to connecting it and making a contribution towards climate change. And I'll give you some examples. But to put it uh, in short, you know, mainly for me making the transitions to see what I, what had it happened with me was on my journey at Intuit, I've been there a long time, uh, uh, actually coming up on 15 years, which is uh, definitely not common in the product management world. But what I have, I actually started out working in finance. I was a, a business finance major. I was a financial analyst. And I went from being a financial analyst to being in marketing. So I was always trying to find what's that thing that excites me and what's, what's the work that I really want to be doing in my life. I spent a couple of years in marketing, decided it wasn't for me. I actually wanted to be closer to the customer and building things and solving customer problems. I made the transition to product. And then I spent about six years in product, after which I made the transition to my current role in the corporate, into a corporate responsibility team. But each of those transitions, you know, required a, a pretty clear conversation with that manager at that time to say, hey, I'm really grateful for what I have. I learned, you know, great skills, but I don't see a long term career on this path for me. And I think I want to go in this direction instead. Now, into it being a really uh, employee friendly company, you know, if your track record is good, they support you in wanting to explore the direction you want to go. And, and many major companies, you know, especially any, you know, I would say at least the top hundred companies to work for list, like, you know, they are all about employee growth and connecting people to their mission. So that's what I would say, I think, as culturally, where it helped with an interview. Me having connections was only as far as the fact that I had ran into our head of sustainability at one point and had a casual conversation with them about potentially doing some work in climate. He was a one person team at the time and only focused on the company footprint. And we would talk a little bit about like, 
hey, what role could our products play potentially in this journey? You know, how could we have this conversation with our customers? Because if Intuit only focused on its own footprint, sure, that's a great start, but that's by no means enough for what's actually the challenge. You know, it's a global challenge and uh, every company, every individual ideally is using the assets and uh, the platform and the network they have to its full advantage to tackle this challenge. That's literally the entire planet, right? It's not any one individual or one entity. It literally requires the effort from the entire world. So, you know, long story short, mainly it's within your company. I would say like, if, you know, if you're a company that's nowhere near connected to climate change at all, like luckily for Intuit, we had a, at least declared a goal to say, you know, Intuit was proactive about reducing its own emissions. And then just a year prior to me coming into this role, they had actually declared that, hey, we realize this is bigger than us. We're gonna actually set a goal for 2030 and say, we're gonna help reduce emissions 50 times our own footprint by the end of the decade, uh, by 2030. How we're gonna do that? We think we're gonna do that by working with our customers, employees, and in the communities where we have, our, have a presence. How exactly are we going to do that with each of those stakeholders? We don't quite know. We'll figure it out. But we know we got to do more, right? So they were at least ambitious enough to, to put that goal out there. Yet they had, at the time, they had hired no one to actually work on those goals. Uh, and so I found that as the opportunity to, to connect with our head of sustainability and say, hey, how are you actually thinking about working with customers to, to address, you know, to, to drive any kind of change here, any impact here? He said, I don't know, I need someone like you to help me think. I was like, great, okay, let's start talking. So it literally became from a casual conversation like that, I said, okay, let's just put a half an hour on our calendars every two weeks. We started brainstorming, coming up with some ideas, which eventually led to me crafting a strategy to say, okay, if you hired me, this is not a 10% job, hire me full time. If you do, this is what we think we go tackle in the first year, and then we build from there. We pitched that to the VP, and I kid you not, it wasn't until a month prior to when I was supposed to leave into it that I actually got the confirmation that, okay, they're going to take me on as a six-month rotation. And then if the rotation goes well, it'll become a full-time role, which it did. Uh, but, you know, the, all, along the journey, there were definitely like big moments of not knowing, is this going to happen or not? So I just want, you know... Uh, when it started with that internal conversation, but then it definitely took some, you know, taking some leap of faith. Yeah, I love that mix of like taking those leaps of faith, like you said, and also when you work hard, you tend to get lucky a little bit more often. Um, hopefully it's fair to generalize that way. And that clearly comes through in the scoping work you did to like define the problem and figure out what it would look like to solve that problem for into its customers. Um, I would love if you could just talk a little bit more about like what the current scope of your role is and like what are some of the key initiatives you're working on to give everyone a little more context on that. Yeah, so uh, my role is completely focused on all of our global customer focused initiatives around sustainability. So what that means is, for example, our major products are uh, that you've probably heard of QuickBooks to manage accounting. Uh, TurboTax, right, filing your taxes, which probably is very fresh in a lot of folks' minds. They've probably just gone through it. And uh, Mint to manage your personal finances, right? And uh, within these, TurboTax has a major presence in U.S. and Canada. Mint has, you know, essentially a presence within the U.S. Um, and also Credit Karma, which we, uh, which was a company we acquired about a year and a half ago. Uh, and then QuickBooks is is where we have the largest global presence, uh, where we have major customer base in U US, UK, Canada, and Australia. So my role is really thinking about, okay, you know, for the customer type, which is for QuickBooks as small businesses, for mentor TurboTax is mainly consumers. Uh, what role do we want to play in their lives uh, when it comes to having this conversation? Uh, now, I'm a firm believer that actually each company has its own unique assets and approach. So you shouldn't necessarily try to like boil the ocean. You know, the ideal way to connect with your customers is exactly where they connect with you today. That's the most relevant conversation, right? So for us, for example, within QuickBooks, you know, 
people come to us for the source of truth for their books, for their business, right? Profit and loss. What am I, how am I doing as a business? Am I above the line, below the line, right? It's, a, it's accounting, pure accounting. And then on top of that, there's insights, there's reporting, uh, there's tr trying to derive and you know, run analytics, et cetera. And then there's a whole host of things that surround it, surround the product because we are a, a platform-based product. So there's you know, uh, thousands of third-party apps that work with QuickBooks that help you manage everything from sales tax to inventory, et cetera, et cetera, right? There's all these periphery products based on the type of business you are that help you manage them. Now, one of the fields I learned about as I was diving into this space was carbon accounting, uh, which is uh, now I would, you know, it was quite nascent when I was just starting out. Now I would say it's, it's getting to some standardization, but still long ways from, you know, fully standardized. Uh, but it's essentially being able to account for what is the carbon footprint for a business? How is it evolving over time? Is it changing, increasing? Uh, is it actually trending towards net zero targets, et cetera, being able to answer that question. And we learned that, wow, we are actually sitting, we always knew we were sitting on a gold mine of data, but wow, we're actually sitting on a gold mine of data even for this problem. Because the typical small business out there, when they try to think about, if they were ever to think about, hey, what is my cl climate footprint? Or what is my business's impact? Where are the opportunities? And as we're seeing more and more, you know, if you're working, if you're a supplier for one of the large multinationals, like for example, how Walmart is starting to require its supply chain to now account for and report emissions, then you've got to figure out a way to, to be able to do that. So we found an opportunity where we could say, wow, we could actually enable small businesses to be able to learn about their business's impact as a starting point, using the data we already have about them in their books, and then pairing that with some incremental experience, you know, for things that may not be directly reflected in that data to help them start that journey. And that's kind of the route we're going down. And then, you know, there's probably a similar route we pursue for when we start to have a conversation with consumers, whether it's through Mint or TurboTax. TurboTax, you'll notice they already have some, you know, some, some questions and experiences they actually ask around, you know, did you take advantage of energy efficiency rebates this year? Did you purchase an energy efficient car this year? And so, hey, here's a uh, tax incentive. But even there, I think there's an opportunity to highlight things up front, right? How do we help you actually make the decision in the journey of the year rather than when you're at the last moment of filing your taxes? Um, so that's hopefully gives you a little bit of sense over my the, the scope of my role. And then my peers, for example, are focused on things like Intuit has major presences in all these major metropolitans. You know, some of the projects we're doing are, for example, uh, working with local school districts to help them connect with solar providers that we know can actually help drive savings for these schools. And Intuit's able to play a role there because we've done major solar projects through our own facilities. We help make that connection. We even pitch in with some funding, help this help an entire school district transition to renewable power. They in turn save money because, uh, you know, having their own solar power costs less. And so the school is then able to use that budget towards putting that back into programs and teacher salaries, et cetera. So it's kind of a win, win, win. But that's the other type of work we do within our communities that some of my peers are driving. That's great. And I did notice those questions in when I was using my, my TurboTax account this year. So that was exciting. Um, awesome. So. Thinking about people who are maybe earlier in their PM career, um, someone like me, someone who's a couple years in is still building their core product skills and their product sense. What yeah. advice would you have for an earlier career PM who's looking to work on climate? What should they be prioritizing right now? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll summarize. And then I noticed Annie is on the call, who actually is an early career PM, and she worked with me actually for six months. Uh, she's in our rotational program and worked with me for six months just this past. So I'd love for her to chime in as well, you know, if she has a, a minute to add anything. Um, so if you're an early career PM, it's really important that you build your core skill set. You know, everything from 
your analytic skills, your ability to be able to think about a problem and boil it down into hypotheses and leap of faith assumption statements, being able to be run ex then run experiments that either prove or disprove those hypotheses, right? All of the core work that frankly, I'm still using on a day-to-day -day basis to even work through this very problem of how we help, how, do, how might we help actually customers uh, take action or make, you know, make a, a contribution towards this fight against climate change. Once you've got your core skill set landed, and, and you know, I was telling you my story earlier, when I was able to go to my manager and say, hey, in six months, I think I'm gonna go in this direction. It's because I knew in my heart at the time, one, my passion became clear, and second, I had confidence in my abilities as a PM that I could say, I know I could get a job anywhere if I wanted, not an issue. And I know that whatever problem I tackle, I have the methodology down that I could break it down into chunks, create a strategy around it, and then actually go step by step through execution to be able to come up with a solution. That takes practice, that takes, you know, sometimes every, every person is different. It, you know, takes years of working in different product environments and running multiple projects, going through the ups and downs of PM, what, you know, which is a wild, wild west uh, for sure, to be able to be able to gain that level of confidence and then be able to sort of call some shots to say, okay, I really want to now pivot my life, not just the product that you're working on, but my life into a new direction. Uh, so that's where I would focus. Uh, and I'd love to hear from Annie, you know, if you, if you have a minute to add anything to that. Yeah, I'll just add something quick. And Nathan was a best manager and Thank I mean, you. you're being what, too I kind. Say, <laughs> <laughs> what I will say is just like, if you have any opportunity and I kind of did the same thing as Nathan, where I like knew I was passionate about this space and found Sean, who was the sustainability leader at the time and just started conversing and telling people and like manifesting the fact that I was really into sustainability and the connections came to life. So yeah, I feel like it was just important to like put it out there and just tell people about your passions and then more will come your way. Um, just because people know you're you're interested and in, in like when an opportunity arises, your name will be one of the people, you know, that they think of initially. So that was just really, I was really grateful for that opportunity. And then yeah, to Nathan's perspective, I think it's just like such an unknown space. So just diving in, experimenting, trying new things, like not being afraid to fail and take risks because no one's gotten it right. You know, we wouldn't be in this climate problematic area if someone had figured it out. Um, so yeah, just like diving in, taking risks, putting things out there in front of people, um, being okay with failures because you're always going to learn something. But yeah, just get, tell people that you're interested and, and try, try to get out of your comfort zone and take risks. Um, but yeah, that's all I got to add. Thank you, Annie. Yeah, and, and you brought up a great point, which, uh, you know, like learning along the journey, right? So um, I'll actually share a link if I get a chance, which is uh, these six videos I even shared with Annie. I've shared with many folks uh, from Project Drawdown called Climate Solutions 101. And it's like a series of 30 minute videos, six videos that literally breaks down the entire space of climate change from the highest sort of problem space level to like what, you know, what is the real problem going on here, the nuts and bolts of it all the way down through the layers of how various aspects of society, right? And all the different uh, industries, job titles, et cetera, what are all the roles they can play in this fight, which is a great framework to be able to then plug in and say, okay, it doesn't matter what industry I'm in, doesn't matter what job I'm in, there's a role that I can play here. Love that. I just dropped the link to those videos in the chat for everyone. Um, and thank you, Annie. That was such a nice addition and context here. Um, that's also a nice segue to your coaching work. And I'd love to hear a little bit about how your climate journey has overlapped with your coaching work. Yes. Um, you know, about the time when I made the switch into, you know, having that conversation with my manager, actually, that was during when I was going through coaching. It was the first time I had ever gone through coaching. I'd never been coached before myself. Um, and how I even got there was this really deep feeling of 
man, I just feel like I'm kind of a little bit just spinning, just doing the same thing over and over. But I feel like I'm kind of lacking some direction. And I've been trying to figure it out myself, but it hasn't quite happened. And there's something about connecting with someone else that can ask you really powerful questions and challenge your thinking, not necessarily giving you answers, but just asking you questions in a way that helps you decide, oh yeah, why am I doing things this way? You know, If I am really interested in working on climate, why haven't I taken a step forward? What am I afraid of? What is the fear? You know, and is that fear justified or is that something I'm using as a way to prevent myself from making the tough decisions? If I leaned into that fear, what would change? What would need to change for me to be able to lean into that fear? So a lot of those conversations that I had during my coaching journey literally helped me have that conversation with my manager because I said, hey, yeah, I've got the PM skill set. I can get any job out there. So I don't have to worry about that. I've got savings. Even if I couldn't find something, frankly, I don't, I wouldn't have to work for years and be just fine. So why am I afraid to take this leap? You know, getting really clear on some of those core things and really feeling them inside yourself so that you can say, okay, now I feel a conviction to go in this to go in this direction and I can actually start to express it. And to Annie's point too, is like, there's some, there's a level of courage it takes to even start talking about it, right? To be able to even tell your manager that you have interest in this area, let alone that you're gonna leave your job and go do something you know, entirely different. Uh, and, but the more you talk about it, you know, that's sort of, this is where my coaching and my, my spiritual path cross over, which is, you know, it all starts with a thought in our head. First, we're getting clear in our thoughts and sitting down after a shower, five minutes, 10 minutes in the morning, and being able to actually just spend that time with yourself to say like, okay, what is important to me? What do I really want to do? What impact do I really care to create in this world? You know, what would actually get me out of the bed that I would feel excited to work on? And just getting clear on that, whether that's climate or not, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, um, and then from there, going to, okay, well, now what are the actions associated with this that I should start to act upon? Because it's thoughts, thoughts govern our energy. And I was feeling energetically low prior to you know, engaging in this coaching conversation because there's all these thoughts that I was just spinning within my head but not making any decisions. Uh, and the reason I wasn't making a lot of the decisions was a lot of assumptions baked in my head. Oh man, what will they think of me? What about this? What about that? Like, what about my career as a PM if I go towards sustainability? You know, all these questions. And the job of a coach is to help you sort of break it down in a way that it becomes digestible and break down your fears, challenge the assumptions, and then go beyond. And then at the same time, right, the spiritual aspect is when you start to get clear in your head of what you want to create, what you really care about, and, and as you bring it into words and start to express it, right? This is energy that you're channeling in and you're sending out into the world that's literally declaring your intention. Even you know, Oprah talks about this. Once we declare our intention and we're clear about it, you know, it's not like, oh yeah, I think I want to work on climate. And then the next thing is like, yeah, no, I don't know what I can really do there. You know, that's the second thought. Maybe that goes in your head. Well, you just contradicted yourself. So no wonder, and you know, things aren't clear. First, you need to get clear yourself. You know, spend the time to do your research. Spend an hour in the morning, half an hour in the morning every day, getting clear yourself. And then once you're clear, declare the intention. You know, this is what I want for myself. This is the direction I want to, this is the kind of impact I want to create. And then you'll notice as you start, it's not that you can just thank yourself to it. That's not what I'm saying, by the way. A lot of people, I think, confuse those aspects as well. Thought is where it begins. You got to get clear in your thoughts. It then has to channel into actions and show up in the world. But until your thoughts are not clear, your actions are not going to be clear either. Right? We know that as PMs, even within our core jobs, whatever we do day to day, 
until we're clear about what is it that we want to do? What experiment are we even trying to run? What the hell do we want to learn from this experiment? Our actions, whatever plans we create, strategies we create, they're not going to be clear either, right? So uh, it's the same thing for your life. So hopefully that helps. That's kind of how I, you know, combine these various aspects to be able to say, how do you move forward in a direction that's true to you? Yeah, definitely. It's funny how much overlap there is between like, come up with a clear strategy, whether it's for your product or your life. <laughs> and so yeah. you have to be clear on that first. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, a lot of us, you know, we make a lot of time for many things, right? And we, you know, those of us that are really great PMs, we make a lot of time to think about our products, the strategy, the tests, the, the whole thing, right? And good PMs know that we got to actually create thinking time for those products. We got to do the same for our lives. You got to create some space for yourself in your life to say, okay, well, what do I want out of my life? And where's the time where I'm going to think about that? and really have no distractions and be able to connect, research, whatever it is. Prioritize yourself in that way. Yeah. And I think everyone's reason for why, why they want to work on climate will be a little different. It'll be unique to them. Right. But I know that being a product manager can be a grind sometimes, can be tough. And thinking about the climate crisis can also be really stressful for people. And a lot mm -hmm. of people have really deep anxiety, myself included, around what is going to happen 10, 50 years down the road. Um, so I guess to wrap this conversation up, what is something that you go back to each day on the days where it feels really hard? Yeah, in fact, you know, I think I just came off a period like that just, uh, you know, uh, last couple of weeks, a couple early weeks in April. Because, you know, working through the business, for example, and trying to get alignment to be able to move in a certain direction, that takes perseverance, you know, and uh, people are, of course, you know, the business outcomes for profit, customers, units, subscriptions, right? Those take precedence over uh, everything else. And, and rightly so. I mean, that, that's the bread and butter for the business. But helping folks see a new perspective, connecting the dots of how to actually help uh, channel a story and then, you know, helping folks actually move in that direction. That takes a lot of just hard work and frankly, some lonely days to be able to like think through, okay, what's the next most meaningful step? You know, how to kind of take this conversation forward? What's the unknown here that you can answer? Um, a lot of it's just, you know, basic product work. So, you know, in, in that sense, it, it just comes down to, okay, like, what's that next leap of faith or hypotheses or strategically, where do I need to either connect with the right leader or what's a conversation we haven't been having that we could have, right, that would help move this initiative one step forward, right? Always that, like, incremental one step forward. Sure, we've got this massive goal for 2030, but what's that, just the right next action. So that kind of helps that's how uh, a little bit of how I help ground myself to say, I know I cannot solve it in one day, but like, am I taking the next most meaningful action? Then if I zoom out from that, that's sort of the day to day. If I zoom out from that and we think about climate change and this massive problem and every year, you know, things seem to be getting worse. You know, there's one, of course, way to just check in and also just see, hey, what progress have we made? You know. At least, at least the globe is talking about it, right? At least there is a global treaty that we happen to be part of again. And at least we have an administration that is trying to do something. You know, are they successful at everything? No, but at least they're trying. Even that definitely, at least for me personally, gives me hope that we are at least having this conversation because climate is a tough topic and it's been a tough topic for decades. You know, the... Uh, the inconvenient truth came out almost 20 years ago, right? And here we are, we're still debating. So it is a very tough conversation. At the same time, if I zoom out even further, we gotta be able to, I think, do our part. You know, in yoga, there's a saying of 100% effort, zero attachment. Uh, and then that is the key to living a fulfilling life and also a happy life. Uh, because if you attach yourself to the outcome, if I attach myself to, 
but we have to get to a 2030, you know, 50 times carbon reduction, or we have to get to a, a carbon neutral world by X date, then I'm going to be willing to cut corners or maybe step on people's toes, or frankly, maybe just drive myself insane, you know, if things are not happening. But if I can wake up every day and say, I did the best I could today, uh, and I put in my 100% effort towards the cause, and then for the rest, I'm going to leave it to the universe to decide, because obviously, this is going to take that, take the entire globe to solve this. It's not just one person that can give you some solace. Also, frankly, even zooming out further from there, I mean, we're just a, a speck in the solar system. Right? This is one tiny planet in the entire cosmos going through, frankly, in the, in the scheme of the universe, it's tiny problem of climate change. It matters to us, but for the rest of the universe, it's like, all right, yeah, you know, take care of your stuff, guys. Stop, stop ruining the planet, but we got lots of other things to worry about in the grand scheme of things. Um, so just look, like, know that you know, there is this larger existence and I think boiling it down to our daily lives, like as long as for each one of us, we can be true to ourselves and we're doing the best we can each day, whatever that might be, you know, maybe that's just a conversation. Maybe that's reading an article and informing yourself, or maybe that's taking, you know, the next step for an initiative at your company or in your community, whatever it might be for you, that is enough. You know, you've woken up and you're starting to do something about it. And over time, that effort will build and it will be, you know, become uh, a snowball that's needed for the time. Thank you. I am feeling better and more prepared to take action already. Hopefully everyone else is feeling that way as well. Um, I will, I'll 